Hi, I'm Shane Getzen, the MLA for Laxon and Parkland, but obviously you can tell by the weather behind us, we call it God's country for a reason. And we're in downtown River Cabar at the Camilla School, and I am absolutely honored and privileged to introduce our Minister of Transportation. He is going, a Minister of Transportation and Economic Corridors, we can't forget that last part, and he has some phenomenal news for the transportation industry. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Minister Dreeshen, could you come take the stage, sir? Well, thank you, Shane, and uh, my Parliamentary Secretary for Economic Corridors. Uh, if I'd love to go off on Economic Corridors today, too, with, with you, Shane, because we've done some tremendous, uh, tremendous work together and uh, just been a pure, pure privilege and honour to, to work with you. But uh, thanks, everybody, for, for coming out here today at uh, Camilla School here with, uh, as I said, the local MLA, Shane Getson, and, and industry folks that are in the transportation industry all across Alberta and just a, a very important significant announcement today and we're still good with the mic okay good uh, I'm here to tell you about some of the changes that uh, we're making for drivers behind the wheels of the school buses that we have uh, here today uh, I was uh, one of the kids that got picked up first in a rural school and dropped off last so I feel like I have spent more time on a cheese wagon than probably any kid in in Alberta but uh, right now school districts and bus companies and private contractors simply can't find enough drivers to fill their routes here in Alberta. And the commercial driver shortage is a problem for Alberta and over about 5,000 truck drivers and about 335 bus driver vacancies in the province just here in Alberta. And this is directly impacting the movement of goods and services and people in Alberta. And I want to make sure that uh, the government isn't the main obstacle that is getting in the way of making it harder to get drivers, school bus drivers, behind the wheel. And that is why I'm here to announce changes to MELT, or mandatory entry-level training for Class 2 bus drivers. Now, we have heard loud and clear from the busing industry, particularly the school bus industry, that MELT is a barrier to hiring drivers in the province. That is why I'm pleased to announce that we are removing the MELT requirement for Class 2 drivers while maintaining safety on our provincial roads. This will make it easier for school boards and bus companies to hire and train drivers and to help out with the bus shortage we see here in Alberta. Regarding Class 2 MELT, no other jurisdiction in Canada has this requirement. So eliminating it harmonizes our requirements and it means reducing red tape for our bus drivers and getting school bus drivers on the road. And we also need to make sure that our children are safe when they're traveling to school. Safety of passengers and on our roadways are paramount and will be maintained as school bus drivers will be able to access new on-the-job training programs and a training grant. This training will support drivers to obtain the skills required to operate a school bus safely. And we will also maintain the requirement for the S endorsement training for school bus drivers, which is about 16, which is exactly 16 hours of specific training. And this training provides school bus drivers with important information of transporting kids. Now, we're also improving the Class 2 drivers with this competency training grant of on-the-job training because new drivers need experience driving school buses. This program will give them some of that on-the-job experience. Now, these changes are overdue as the commercial driving shortage is in both the trucking and the busing industries, and it's costing Albertans money every day. The Canadian Trucking Alliance estimates that driver shortages have increased transportation costs by as much as 30% in Alberta. And we have seen the impact of disruptions to our supply chain with everyday items on store shelves. And that is why we're also announcing that Transportation and Economic Corridors is expanding its training support for Class 1 drivers as well. So there will be an additional new on-the-job training program for Class 1 drivers to provide post-secondary or post-licensing training to these drivers. Now, a broad variety of post-licensing training options will be created for industry, by industry, in partnership with the Alberta Motor Transportation Association. Now, this voluntary training program for licensed commercial drivers will be designed to provide participants with job-related skills to meet the full scope of work performed by a commercial truck driver. The job competency training will help to build a skilled labor pool to support the entire industry, including smaller trucking companies in Alberta. We have heard from the industry that not having job-related training is a barrier for new drivers, 
and we will dedicate $9 million in grant funding to help provide this support. And of the, 900, of the 9 million, we will support both licensing for individuals who require melt training and the post, the post licensing on the job training for all new class one and class two drivers. So the creation of this competency grant responds to industry's request to help in support of on the job training for commercial drivers. And these changes will help to attract more commercial drivers to reduce the commercial driver shortage. We are responding to the commercial driver shortage and ensuring that goods flow safely throughout this province and will also flow safely. So with that, I'm happy to introduce uh, Ray Lee Miller from Southland Transportation to give some additional remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Alberta's transportation leaders have been asking for this change since 2019. It safely allows us to provide individual training based on competency instead of a time-based format that doesn't take existing skills into consideration. I applaud the Government of Alberta for listening to our concerns and I am excited for the improvements our communities will feel. The shortage of school bus drivers in Alberta is a significant problem that required urgent attention from the provincial government. The recent provincial budget has promised increased education transportation funding, which will mean a spike in school bus ridership. Alberta could see an additional 5,000 riders and 1,200 school runs added to an already overtaxed system. This considerable growth made it imperative that the government of Alberta acted now. Student transportation companies in Alberta have been actively recruiting candidates to become school bus drivers, but they cannot solve the issue alone. There are currently hundreds of Albertans waiting to be licensed, but the current process to certify new drivers needed streamlining as candidates are forced to wait up to a month before they start their training. This is a significant obstacle to recruitment and training efforts. Alberta is the only province in Canada that required the mandatory entry level training program for class 2S bus drivers. Other provinces have taken measures to incentivize driver retention, separate the school bus license class from others and minimize barriers to licensing new applicants. Therefore, amending the MELT program in Alberta will bring it in line with other provinces and help alleviate the growing school bus driver shortages in our communities. Becoming a school bus driver has long been a fantastic job for Albertans from all walks of life. The prohibitive process limited our industry from managing how we effectively trained Albertans seeking seasonal work that fit their lifestyle. Combined with the recent education budget announcements, we are now in a better position to manage the growing demands. A key item to remember is that the license examination process remains unchanged. So too will Southland Transportation's dedication to communities by upholding its professional training standards. This does not mark a, ma a radical change. It only returns the flexibility to customize training programs which aligns with the rest of Canada. This call to action was requested by stakeholders across the province, including school boards and student transportation leaders. School buses are essential for safe transportation of children to and from school. They are 15 times more safe than the family car, and the ongoing driver shortage is putting children in our communities at risk by forcing them onto alternative transportation options. Although we still have a long road ahead, to manage the economic impacts felt over the past few years, this marks a turning point for that journey. I thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Joe Dwyer, who is the board chair for the Sturgeon County Public Schools. Come up, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. This is a great day, actually. Um, first of all, welcome to this brand new school, Camilla School in our area. We're very proud of it. And thank you, Shane Getson, and everything for you do for us. And thank you all for being here. Our bus contractors uh, for Sturgeon Public School Division have been so important to us for 50, 60 years. 
and they have gotten our kids to school every day safe. Our safety record is perfect, and they work hard at that. The program that was in place did not allow us to be sustainable in a way for small contractors. It was an expensive, long process. It was hard to get drivers to come and work for you, especially in a small rural area. This decision today is going to allow our bus contractors, I'm throwing this out, I don't even want to read this thing, uh, our bus contractors to be sustainable, as simply as that. Um, we have uh, a lot of, uh, the history is a lot of farmers got a couple of buses, one bus, and did this to get the kids to school. And it's grown over that. We have an association of bus contractors in our division, and they work together to make the best transportation system they can for our schools and this was just in the way they are safe they train their buses they train their bus contractors and their uh, bus drivers and it's showing it in their safety records so today i am just really happy to stand up here and say thank you to all those that are involved in making this decision and allowing our especially our small rural bus contractors to be sustainable in their business and keep hauling our kids to school in the safest way they can. It's a huge decision today on a very complicated system for small contractors. And I know today there's gonna to be a bunch of them jumping up right down and, and smiling and saying, hey, that's, that's gonna help us. So thank you for all those that were involved in this. And uh, from Sturgeon Public School Division, uh, it's great news. Thank you. Again, thank you. Okay, and with that, we will now turn to questions from the media. So we'll have time for one question and one follow-up. So if you have any questions, please line up behind the mic. Hi, my question is for you, Minister. Um, I'll take my glasses off, if you will. Probably should, thanks. <laughs> um, if I remember correctly, the MELT program was put in place after the Broncos uh, crash. So can you explain how removing it makes the situation different in terms of training for bus drivers prior to putting MELT in place? Like, what's the difference between now removing it and before it was put in? So, so MELT is uh, mandatory entry level training has been a, a Canada-wide uh, initiative. And as of right now, Ontario West have MELT training for all class one drivers, so large semi-trucks. Uh, however, Quebec East provinces do not have MELT for any of their Class 1 driver's uh, licenses. They, they do indicate, though, that they, they want to move up to, to MELT standards, Quebec East, but as of right now, it's Ontario West has MELT for Class 1. However, in Alberta, they, this was the only province in Canada that actually brought in MELT training for Class 2, for, for bus drivers. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that since that, and as, as Joe mentioned, since that change, uh, we've just seen that it's very hard to actually get bus drivers uh, in Alberta. And as, as was also mentioned, the changes that uh, Minister LaGrange made in, in, in education about having a, a smaller radius of, of school bus kids. So now there's additional demands for more school buses because now kids, especially in urban areas, are being bused to school. That's, that's, those are two lines going in the opposite direction of having a higher demand for school bus drivers, but yet a program that was brought in for class two that actually made it harder for school bus drivers to, uh, to hire them and to train them up. So that's, that's kind of the, the background on it, but specifically in addition to, or in addition to these changes to, to melt class two, there's on the job competency training. So whether it's, it's Southland or, or other training schools, there will be grant dollars that follow the driver so the school bus driver, so they'll be able to go out, get specific training on an actual bus that they would actually be driving. And so not just a training bus or a training vehicle. And that we feel working with industry is the best way to make sure that we're having even safer drivers than, than we've ever had because they're getting that on the job competency training. So there's the two, two aspects that we're, we're introducing today. And do you have any data that suggests um, if security improved with MELT or stayed the same in terms of, you know, uh, bus driving um, incidents? We've, we've spoken to, uh, to the insurance bureau. Uh, they don't, they have kind of early stats. Uh, obviously COVID um, changed a lot of the, uh, you know, driving habits mm -hmm. on, on roads. 
but we've we've seen if anything actually an increase in accidents since melt mm -hmm. was brought in uh, again is one of the reasons why we think on the job competency training for for class one and class two is actually a, a better way to to have safer safer roads in the province okay. thank you okay and we will now turn to questions on the phone so operator can you please put through the first caller Yes, first caller is Carly Robinson, Carly Robinson, City News Edmonton. Hi there. Uh, my question is for the minister on the topic of the, the Humboldt Broncos. We just had the fifth anniversary of that uh, devastating crash. And I spoke to one of the fathers, Chris Joseph, who said that the work that Alberta, even being ahead of other provinces, has done to improve safety on the roads is a drop in the bucket. What would you say to parents who of those who were on that bus that day who have been advocating for change today, hearing some of the changes are being rolled back? Well, obviously the the humble bus crash was 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 terrible, and and I think any any family, any Canadian, uh, hearing that story and, and seeing the the effects that it's had on on those kids is is devastating, and it is something that when when we made these changes. We also looked at how we could actually improve safety. And that's why I think it's so important, this on-the-job competency training. I think Alberta taking the lead, I would guess that maybe other provinces may, may follow Alberta's lead on these on-the-job competency training where you're actually having grants follow the driver on the specific truck or bus that they'll be driving. And I think that's, you know, safety is always a, an, evolving, an evolving issue and we want to make sure that we have the the safest trucks the safest roads the safest buses and being and enabling kids especially to be able to to get home safely so uh obviously willing to to be open and listening to to uh to the parents of, of the humbled bus crash and, and other stakeholders of how we can make sure that our, our roads are safer but we we truly believe working with industry uh, that these changes and this on the co on the job competency training is uh, is the best way to make sure that uh, our roads are safer. Okay. And just just to follow up, sorry, just to follow up here with uh, commercial drivers, uh, many of them do feel that melt and the cost that it takes uh, to do the training is is a barrier. You mentioned some some grants. Can you elaborate on on what those grants are? What supports are for for getting more? drivers through this training um, for the commercial drivers uh, and uh, for such an essential job? Yeah, so uh, for class one and also for, for class two, these on-the-job competency training, we're, we're still in, in, con in consultation with, uh, with uh, businesses, operators that actually offer in-house uh, on-the-job competency training as well as, as other trainers and other instructors. So we're, we're still flexible in, in how we can actually roll it out. But the, the main parameter that we do have is that the grant will actually follow the driver. So whatever that amount uh, comes to is, is still being worked on. And, and what are the specific parameters in the, the training, uh, we're still working with industry to make sure that we get it right. But that, that will be rolled out in, in the coming weeks. But we wanted to make sure that uh, we were clear that on the job competency training that that those grant dollars will actually follow the driver again trying to attract more drivers into the industry as well as making it easier for for them to obtain their their license but also or their license they already have it but to also make it easier for them to uh, to have that on the job training after they've all, or after they've had their their class two license or class one operator can you please put through the next caller Thank you. Kevin Berger, Town & Country. Hi. Uh, I just have the one question, no need for a follow-up. Um, uh, as I recall, MELT requirements, uh, as was stated, came in after the Humboldt tragedy, and, or Humboldt Broncos tragedy. That was around 2018, 2019 in there. Why are the, as you said, these are long overdue. What, why is it taking so long for the MELT requirements to be dropped? Or, or for for these to, to be dropped for for truck commercial drivers, uh, I, I it's it's hard to, to speculate on on why, uh, but I think the the need was was becoming greater as we we saw the changes in drivers not being able to to get into the industry, and as that that driver shortage got worse and worse, and when we also, as I mentioned earlier, the changes in education of having now a higher demand. For, for school bus operators in Alberta because now we're having more Alberta kids on more school buses. So 
we, we knew that we were behind on trying to match the, the driver shortage with the appropriate amount of drivers. And knowing that, again, this, this additional change to need more school bus drivers, we wanted to look at every possible way to make sure we could attract more drivers into the industry. But again, paramount, the number one main safety, or safety being the number one main issue, is something we always wanted to address, and that's why we brought in the on-the-job competency training grant as well. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? There are no additional callers in the queue. And uh, last call for questions from the floor. Yes, thank you very much. I just want to know if you have an estimation of how many school bus drivers this change will in enable um, school transportation companies to hire, let's say, in the next year or so. So we know currently there's over 300 school bus driver vacancies or shortages right now. I think it's 335. Uh, and so that, again, is, is only going to get worse when these new changes are, are brought into the, the new school year it's because there'll just be, there'll be more vacant, there'll just be a higher demand, there'll be more vacancies when we need more, um, more school bus drivers. So we want to make sure we can tie this in at, uh, at the same time. Did you say 335 or 305? 335. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. And with that, that uh, ends our questions. So thank you everyone for being here today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys.